How can you earn more tips when driving for delivery platforms like DoorDash and Postmates? Well, I'm live right now here in La Jolla in San Diego, California, and I just completed my first delivery. So let's go over customer service during this ride along and go over how to earn more tips. Well, firstly, I'm driving on a pretty good bonus, an extra $4 per delivery. But when it comes to customer service, how can you make sure you best set yourself up to earn tips? Well, here's a good example. I went to the front door, but that wasn't the best place to meet the customer. I actually had someone open the door and said, no, actually, you got to go around back, go around back and in through the gate. So I did that and the customer is waiting there and he just apologized like, ah, sorry, sorry, man. And I'm like, yeah, I went to the front door. He's like, ah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Just keep a low pressure because it's fine. I told him like, that's fine, man. It's fine. No worries. Hey, I got your delivery for you because it makes the customer feel good. It's low pressure. They don't want to have to make you walk, go to the wrong address and basically inconvenience you. So that's order number one, but I'm driving for three and a half hours today. So let's see what I get next. Here's a tip for you. If you just get an order request and you're basically at the restaurant, keep in mind, if you just got it, they just got it as well. So I'm telling you, there's no point in speeding, especially if you just give the order request, anticipate a few minutes wait. Here's a question that's been debated. Look where I just finished an order. I'm in Mira Mesa. It's the market next to the one that I'm scheduled in, which is La Jolla. The debate is, should I stay here and wait for an order? Will I get an order eventually? Or will I never get an order because I'm too far away from La Jolla? Or do I drive back to La Jolla and then there's some empty miles in doing that? <laughs> what do you think? Let me know. Now here's what I do, in my opinion, if you sit here and while it is, I think it was about 10 minutes away from a hot spot in La Jolla, you can wait here, but you may be waiting a good amount of time unless you get an order that's on the outskirt of, in this case, the La Jolla market. So I'm gonna experiment, I'm gonna try to wait here for an order against my better judgment, against what I recommend, just to test it again. Let's see if I get an order waiting here versus driving back to the La Jolla marketplace. See nothing yet. That's why I don't recommend it. It's been about like, I don't know, 12, maybe 15 minutes. So not something I recommend staying outside of a market segment. So back to La Jolla. That's it, finished. Seven deliveries and it was, it was busy tonight. It was a little frustrated, there was a lot going on. It just, you know, when it's back to back to back, had uh, some problems finding customers. But hey, let's get home and let's go over the numbers. All right, it's good to be back home. Let's go over the numbers after a lot of walking back and forth between these apartment complexes tonight. Tonight's shift was from 4.30 p.m. until 9 p.m. And during that time, my total gross revenue was $78.25. The gross revenue per hour was $17.39. During this shift, I completed seven deliveries, received six tips, with an average tip of $4. A moderate amount of driving tonight, the business miles were 44. And taking our standard IRS business deduction on those miles, that gives us a tax deduction of $25.30. And deducting that from our gross revenue, that gives us a net revenue before taxes of $52.95. Or a net revenue per hour of $11.77. So why did we hit lower numbers here? Under $12 in net revenue per hour and under 18 in gross revenue per hour. 
Number one, you didn't get enough orders during your shift. You should be averaging a minimum of two deliveries per hour. Now, if you're delivering downtown, if you're delivering in a very dense area, and especially if you're on foot, on scooter, on bike, you can average even more than that. But for four and a half hours, just getting seven deliveries, I feel like I could have done more there. Now, one metric that was strong, something that we really haven't looked at before, is the per delivery average. Now, while I did do just seven deliveries, the average earnings on each delivery was $11.18. So while each order was paying pretty well, ideally I would have squeezed in another one or two deliveries during this shift. That and then ideally, of course, you always want to minimize the business miles. But as I mentioned at the end of the shift, there was at least two deliveries where I had some problems finding the customer. And that comes down to the apartment to house risk. That risk of accepting orders that are going to be delivering to apartments versus homes and having to navigate those apartment complexes. Now, yes, the DoorDash app and Postmates does this very well as well. They show you the exact building in that complex where you should deliver to. But when it comes to parking and or actually getting in the complex and walking through it and navigating it to that building, that can still take time. And then there's issues of maybe you're on the wrong corner of that building. Whenever you get to the right building and having to walk around the entire building just to get to the other side. So I want to ask you a question. Do you typically try to accept orders that do deliver to homes or is it basically 50 50 for you delivering it to apartments versus homes? Post that down below in the comments section and make sure to click on my Amazon storefront in the first link of my description. If you have a side hustle, that is the very best place to get the very best accessories. And do click or tap the screen right now for my most recent video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.